Welcome back to Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. I'm Tom White, and I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin Hinks. But let's bring in our next guest for our cash tag segment. That's going to be Andy Swan, the co-founder of Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Andy. Hey, thank you. All right, so we're talking more retailers. You guys gave us the Home Depot report yesterday. Worked out pretty well. It didn't look good initially, but it worked out well as everybody parsed through that report. Now, Target, shares are down about 21% so far this year. Far off of those all-time highs we saw in November. Same thing that Walmart said. Uh, they gave us lower guidance. Now, I always think of Target as maybe that, that middle to upper class shopper as opposed to Walmart. So they had the inventory shift there. Are you seeing data that kind of reflects that? Walmart did say that they had a really good start to back to school season. We're about halfway through there. Are you seeing positive data uh, out of Target ahead of this report? Yeah, pretty positive, especially when you look longer term. Um, you know, when we compare Target versus Walmart, which I think is the natural comparison, especially after, um, you know, after Walmart reports, before Target reports, uh, it's nice to see Target, um, you know, really outperforming Walmart in terms of like folio metrics of consumer demand and consumer happiness at the same time. This is one of those charts where, you know, like most charts, you kind of want to be up and to the right. This is no exception. Uh, you know, Target showing some uh, demand growth, which puts it over to the right, and some consumer happiness uh, levels that are higher than Walmart's puts it up on the chart. Uh, so we like it comparably versus Walmart, especially longer term. And there's some really uh, interesting drivers for Target that, that we're starting to see early indications uh, that Target may be in, in a really good spot long term. And that is, uh, we're seeing things work kind of across the board. Uh, In-store visits, um, you know, up 16% year over year in ter terms of consumer demand. I think more importantly though, the omni-channel offerings up 23% year over year. It tells me that both strategies are working at the same time, which is uh, a, very good, uh, a very good sign for Target. And it's private labels are doing well. Uh, we've talked on this show with you guys about the importance of private label brands, especially in an inflationary environment where people may be looking to save some money. Uh, they go down shelf to your own products and you make a higher margin, which uh, can work out uh, 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 for Target's favor. And then really just like you just said, you know, Walmart showing a good back to school season aligns perfectly with what we're seeing at Like Folio. Uh, for Target, we see that up 30% year over year, which is a really big number. Uh, you know, and part of that is just because, you know, kids are going back to school in a normal way this year for, you know, 98% of the country. I think that's a big driver. Uh, and, and it's good to see that for Target shareholders, it's good to see that those folks are going to Target. So I think there's going to be room for optimism uh, on the call, unlike last quarter. Uh, you know, I think Target's in a position where maybe they can get on there and say uh, the worst is behind us. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see what the actual numbers are. But from a like folio data perspective, pretty positive for Target, at least an early indication that things uh, may the, the worst may be behind the company. Andy, when you look at these two companies and they are similar in some ways, although I believe if you ask Target, their goal is not to become a Walmart, to right. become something different, a different level of, uh, of retail. But what do you think the biggest difference is between these two companies? One's bigger, we know that. One seems to have a higher uh, level of overall quality and you know, a, a, a little better customer service. What do, do, does like Folio, what do you guys see as the main differentiator between these two companies, aside from the obvious comedic uh, value of one of them? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's always, that's always where your mind goes to first. But you know, I think, yes. I think one of the biggest drivers and difference makers for Walmart is its grocery selection. Uh, I think it makes a huge difference for a lot of families, and it brings a lot of people in the door that otherwise might not shop at Walmart, but their their grocery actually is pretty good, and it brings people into the store, and then naturally they're going to buy other items that are, uh, are are higher margin. From a consumer experience standpoint, though, I'll say you know Target is uh, significantly better uh, than Walmart for most people in most locations. In fact. You know, I was just at a Target a few days ago, kind of in a 
not so great area of town and all of the stores next to it had you know litter out front and and all kinds of problems with what was going on just with the aesthetics of the store but you walked into this target and you grab the cart and it lo and behold it rolls smoothly it feels good in your hands and you're you know it's just getting your shopping trip off to the right start so i think target does a better job on the on the details and on the aesthetics of what's going on in their stores uh, walmart has the advantage on pricing i thought it was really interesting in the walmart call they talked about uh, consumers you know making a hundred thousand dollars or more uh, helping drive a lot of their growth um, you know which you know, if, if you look at it one way, maybe that means that those folks are just coming down uh, market enough to go into a discount retailer like a Target or Walmart. On the other hand, you start to worry, are they getting those customers from Target? I think we'll have to wait for Target's call to, to know the answer to that for sure. Yeah, and that kind of leads into my question here, Andy, because this is the concern that I have with Target. It seems like back to school is going to do well. Uh, they were they were high during, uh, you know, the COVID, the pandemic, the middle of it, because they offered more furniture, more electronics maybe than Walmart did. But I think one of the key things that I wanted to know about is their, the fact that they have no gas stations and the carryover that Costco and Walmart have gotten from their subscription-based services, uh, you know, those memberships that you have, that equates to maybe more customer traffic going into those stores. Is that the one thing that you that that you might say provides maybe a thorn in the side of Target because they're not selling gas like the other major retailers in this space? Yeah, they don't. They aren't bringing you naturally to the store every right. week, you know, because you're trying to save uh, three or four cents per gallon like you get at Costco or, or at Sam's Club. So I think you're onto something there. Uh, I will say that I think Target can can make up for that because they can. They can get away with a little bit more margin. They're not their their customers not quite as price sensitive as Walmart. Mm -hmm. And again, I really like the way they're going with their private label brands. A lot of their private label brands look like uh, you know brand name products and really well designed. It doesn't look like you're just buying the cheap thing on the shelf. So I think Target's done a very good job with that as well, uh, and that can be a driver uh, for the company going forward. Longer term, I think uh, Target's executing pretty well, but has has a bit to prove short term for me. Yeah, and those margins on those private label brands that don't look like, I've been in there, Andy, they don't look like private label label oh. brands like most stores. I think that's a, that's a good point there. Um, do you guys have an earnings score for Target going into this report? Yeah, we, you know, at the beginning of the week is when we put our earnings scores out and Target was dead neutral. I think that now that it's gotten this big bump on the heels of, of Walmart, I would say the risk is probably a little bit more uh, to the downside. Uh, we, you know, we really felt like it was pretty well priced at the beginning of the week, but uh, we'll have to see. I love the company long term, and I think if we get an earnings report that disappoints, that's when we can start talking about uh, a long term opportunity for investors because the company is doing uh, things the right way. It's just tough sledding right now in this environment. Yeah, it seems like Walmart has filled their gap from when they uh, gave poor guidance. Yeah. Target has yet to do that, but has moved uh, significantly higher over the last several weeks. All right, Andy, great stuff as always. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good one. All right, that's Andy Swan, the co-founder of Likefolio, helping us break down the data here on Target.